Assassins, assassins, everywhere you look. While the job of a stealthy killer is to go about their work unseen, that certainly has not been the case in the video game world, with a new Assassin's Creed game dropping every couple of weeks or so. All right, more like once a year, but still, there are a lot of these games, and it's difficult to remember a time when they weren't a household name in the world of gaming. But 2007 was just such a time, and while there had already been a handful of sequels the last time I completed the original, the steady stream of Assassin's Creed games has yet to slow down down. With the series going through something of an overhaul in the last couple of installments, however, I thought it would be the perfect time to revisit the game that started it all again. That's right, once again, it's time for me to complete Assassin's Creed. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, a show which I'm redoing the first 120 games in the original Completionist lineup. More on that in the description box down below. The last time I played Assassin's Creed 1 on the show, I remember having a pretty miserable time, mostly because the first time I played it, I loved the game, and then I did it for the show, and my opinion drastically changed because I ran into a lot of problems. Several years have passed since then, and I'm hoping that I will not experience the same problems again, even though I'm playing it on the 360 once again, because there are no achievements on the PS3 or PC versions of the game. So, will Assassin's Creed 1 still hold up? I definitely hope so. Let's begin. Assassin's Creed obviously didn't invent map-driven open-world games, but it did set a template for the genre that has followed to this day, which is either good or bad depending on how you feel about that sort of exploration-based gameplay. Either way, Assassin's Creed was the beginning of a video game dynasty, which even the developers didn't foresee. Originally intended to be an installment of the Prince of Persia franchise in the wake of Sands of Time, Assassin's Creed started as an expansion on the most fun part of that series, climbing stuff. It was one of the first games to unleash the players into a landscape and tell them to just climb whatever the hell they want, instead of limiting them to certain obstacles. The Order of the Assassins was originally going to be worked into the story of the Prince, until it was decided that it would work better on its own. They even used the Sands of Time engine during development before developing their own. And while I love Princes and Persia and Princes of Persia, that deviation was probably for the best. Had it just been the next installment of the Prince of Persia series, it may have gotten lost in the shuffle, rather than getting a chance chance to violently carve out its own reputation. And carve it did. The Assassin's Creed series is still going strong over a decade later, continuing to accommodate the increasing demand for historically accurate murder sprees. And while a lot of the games in the series are pretty similar apart from their various time periods, a recent switch up of some core mechanics probably ensures that we'll be seeing Assassin's Creed games until the end of time. But that continued refinement of the formula will probably also make sure that the original Assassin's Creed goes down as the least talked about in the franchise. It set the formula, but the following games ran with it, and the series is still so relatively young that it's not like there's any real nostalgia for Altair yet and his stab ventures through Stab Town. But it's still a game with a lot of stuff to do, and a lot of people to stab, which means that completing it can be a bit of a chore. The later games have even more stuff, but they also streamlined the process of getting it all, with increasingly detailed maps that help to spell it all out for you. I'll be re-completing Assassin's Creed on the Xbox 360 just like God intended. The first step in Altair's Kilothon is going to be to complete the story, which means puncturing the flesh of nine Templar targets in a quest to regain my honor. Next, I'll be doing all the side quests and optional assassinations, which also means completing all the investigations of the main murderers so I can get full synchronization. Then, of course, there are the game's one trillion collectibles. That's an exaggeration, but not as much of one as I wish. There are so many flags laying around this version of the Middle East that you'd think there'd be a bunch of middle schoolers who are using Jerusalem for the world's most disturbing game of flag football. But I'll be picking up every single one of those flags because I hate littering. Yo, pick up your trash, 
this beautiful ancient city ain't gonna clean itself up. And then finally, there are achievements, which I can't imagine I'll find any less tedious than I did last time. Some of them are combat-based. There's also stuff like the conversationalist achievement, which requires me to talk to Lucy, the lab tech, until she tells me to go away every single time. Yo, this game is called Assassin's Creed, not Assassin's Small Talk. But look, I've done this all before, so none of it should be too difficult. The only thing I am worried about, however, is a glitch that screwed me over twice last time, where flags or Templars can just full on disappear, making the game impossible to complete. But at least now I know to be on the lookout for it this time around. So I can hopefully avoid having my sanity assassinated by the hidden blade of irritation. And speaking of hidden blades and irritation, this thing is really starting to, you know what? Never mind. That's too much, too much information. While the experience of playing Assassin's Creed was unparalleled back in 2007, players have a lot more options now when it comes to this kind of game, and even in this specific series. So while some credit has to be given for innovation, as time goes on, the original Assassin's Creed feels more and more like a dated, repetitive, and frustratingly incomplete experience. Assassin's Creed stars both ancient assassin Altair and his hapless descendant Desmond Miles. At the mercy of the mysterious Abstergo Corporation, Desmond is coerced into a machine called the Animus, where he can live out the memories of his ancestors. Absergo is looking for an ancient artifact called the Apple of Eden, and they expect Desmond to help them find it. Meanwhile, in the past, Altair attempts to make amends for screwing up a mission by helping his fellow assassins take on their nemesis, the Sinister Templar Order. The entire Assassin's Creed series is built on this conflict between Templars and assassins in a desperate race to outstab each other. And while the first game does a pretty good job of establishing that conflict, it could have benefited from paying more attention to its characters. Desmond and Altair both feel like blank slates. Well, actually, they each have one defining trait. Desmond whines and Altair murders, but that's about it. The concept of legacy and what it means to be descended from major figures in history is never really explored, which is a shame because the premise of the game is perfectly suited to explore that exact thing. The same goes for the fusion of sci-fi and history, which I still actually think is a really neat idea. Using memory as the framing device is cool, but it feels like at times, the game doesn't trust its sci-fi elements. If the Desmond story had been a bit more dynamic, I doubt I would have noticed this issue, but I still think his segments stop the game dead in their tracks. It's all stabbing, climbing, and sneaking until you get pulled out of the Animus and have to spend the next chunk of the game wandering around an office building. Yay! We so much fun! The big saving grace here is the setting, which Ubisoft clearly put a ton of care and research into. The cities of Jerusalem, Acre, and Damascus have real personality, and it feels like you've been pulled into an incredibly specific time and place. Exploring different eras has always been a major draw of the series, and I actually think it's neat they started right here instead of a time and place that people are a little more familiar with. It feels like they really cared about honoring history from the very beginning of the series, and that's dope. The cities are also fully populated, which allows for all sorts of fun stealth mechanics. While the AI of the townsfolk is far from perfect, it does feel cool to slip into a crowd unnoticed as you approach a target. On top of sneaking, the game's other main mechanics are climbing, fighting, and stabbing. Like I mentioned before, the freedom of climbing felt really fresh and cool when this game first came out. And it will never not feel good to get to the top of a tower and look down on all the foolish peasants going about their day. A thousand other games have lifted Assassin's Creed viewpoint system because it's a really logical and fun way to get a sense of your surroundings. Just climb up super high, of course. Again though, the game is a product of its time and it's not hard to think of all the cool games that have pulled off even cooler versions of this. As for the combat, it's counter-based as it would be for most of the games in the series. If you time your counters to an enemy's attack, you'll pull off a super sweet finishing move and it feels great for the first couple of hours of the game. And then you start to realize how repetitive it is, even in the boss fights. This is another thing that lots of games have done better, but that doesn't mean it's never satisfying to bury your sword deep into a guard's unsuspecting neck. In fact, the stabbery has always been where this series shines, and that's been true from the very beginning. The Hidden Blade is cool, has always been cool, and will always be cool. And slipping your sneaky little wrist knife between the ribs of unsuspecting enemies never stops being fun. Again, there's a little more variety to it in the later games, but I'm convinced that the hidden dagger is the main reason this game took off the way that it did. Also, Altair hides his dagger on his wrist, which makes way more sense than hiding where I've been hiding mine. 
I don't know why I didn't think about that. The design of the cities and assassination missions is solid, if somewhat unremarkable in the larger context of the series. There's none of the wacky Rube Goldberg assassination shenanigans with something like the Hitman series, but areas surrounding your primary targets feel vibrant and alive enough to be immersive. Killing someone without anyone around ever knowing about it will never not feel cool. In the game, that is. In real life, it comes with a crushing guilt that one can never truly be free of. Or at least, I assume it does. I wouldn't know anything about murder. I just play games. Leave me alone! The combat challenges for achievements were still just as awful as they were before. But the real unfortunate pain in the ass this time around is that the Xbox 360 version of the game is still very, very buggy. In fact, I had so many more bugs this time around that I lost a Templar and a separate flag twice in the same hour after exploring the entire opening area, meaning I had to restart the game twice. This was incredibly awful to experience as you can cannot skip any cutscenes, and I spent maybe about six hours of my life back to back doing the same task of collecting the flags and killing Templars very carefully. You can actually kind of tell that the game is falling apart more and more as I got further into my completion process due to the visual bugs, and let me tell you, it was very depressing. Aside from dumb combat achievements and the unnecessary glitching, a glaring flaw I didn't really see much before is how much Assassin's Creed limits Altair in your progression. You are stuck at the whim of the plot of the game to decide what power-ups and abilities you get. It makes progression look like a lot is happening and moving forward at any given moment. But if you take out all the side quests, collectibles, and achievements, what you end up with is a four-hour game that could easily have been ended faster if there was a skip dialogue option. Although I do have a soft spot for Kristen Bell. She's like one of my favorite actors of all time, and she's one of my favorite parts of the game. But even her performance could not save me from the dreadful task of remembering to talk to her all the damn time. Assassin's Creed 1 is a game that while I loved back in the day, when I I completed it for the show the first time around, I really didn't like it. A few years later, I actually like it less. You can boil it down to graphics and game-breaking bugs or even unoptimized repetitive tasks, but at the very least, Assassin's Creed's atmosphere and vibe is the strongest thing going for it. While later games in this series would offer up unlockable goodies like items and costumes, there is not a lot of stuff to be found here. And by not a lot, I mean basically nothing. Well, after you're done, you get some of the restrictions on who you cannot kill lifted, but that's it. Nothing that's gonna change the game in a major way, and nothing that makes collecting literally hundreds of flags feel worth it. Except the knowledge that your brain is now fully synchronized with that of your ancestor, I guess. So, if that's your thing, then hooray. Completing this game a second time around was mostly tedious. I've played worse games for sure, but knowing that there's so many better versions of this game out there made it feel somewhat pointless. Add in the the extra hours of playtime that I spent trying to restart games because of glitches and also just being paranoid about glitches coming at me all the damn time and what you have here is a gamer who is just being burnt out by doing the same damn thing for 42 hours straight. While I recompleted Assassin's Creed, there were 9 deaths, 420 flags collected, a 44 achievements unlocked, 42 hours of total playtime, and Zero hidden blades that I'm definitely not hiding somewhere uncomfortable because I have never definitely hurt anyone before. What's with all the questions? Leave me alone! I found that most of the time I was completing Assassin's Creed, I honestly just wished I was playing one of the sequels instead. And while I appreciate that they couldn't exist without this one, Assassin's Creed's exploration of the past feels like it would have been left better in the past. Unless you're especially drawn to the specific culture of time period, there's nothing in this game that you can't get pretty much anywhere else. I never thought that replaying a game that I remembered so fondly in my brain would be such a travesty as it has been with Assassin's Creed 1. Mostly because of the fact that the first time around, I had the problems with the flags. The second time around, I had deleted game saves. I had the flags again. I had to restart Assassin's Creed 1 three times. Three separate times after an hour and a half being into it with no skippable cutscenes. Aside from that, the story of the game is okay. What you do in the game is incredibly repetitive, and with the graphics and everything kind of falling apart as you play, at the end of the day, Assassin's Creed 1 is less than okay. It is below average, to say the least. So, 
With that in mind, guys, I give this game my new completionist rating of... Look at it. Look at it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know anything about today's episode somewhere on the internet. I had the most amount of tech problems I've ever had on the on New Game Plus so far with Assassin's Creed 1, and it drove me crazy. You try playing the 360 version for completionist's sake, and you will go insane. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. I appreciate it very much, and we'll see you next week for the brand new episode. Bye.